Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire here in the background. Today, once again, we're talking about shotguns and the subject of maximum effective range and how to increase it. But today, what I'm specifically discussing is the hypothesis that a double-barreled shotgun can have a greater maximum effective range than a single-barreled shotgun, whether that single barrel is a single shot, a pump, or an auto loader, even when the two guns in question have the exact same choke and are using the exact same ammunition. Now, how could that be? Well, before we go there, I want to take a moment and discuss maximum effective range. And this comes with a caveat that I have discussed this at length on previous occasions, so today I'm going to give you the very short version. Now, if you want the basic training definition, maximum range is the greatest distance that a projectile can travel and still inflict a wound. Maximum effective range is the greatest distance at which the average Marine can consistently hit a target. Yes, I've been in the Marine Corps and the Army. So if we were to take that concept and apply it to shotguns, the way I would define maximum effective range would be the greatest distance at which you, with your shotgun and your ammunition choices, can consistently keep enough pellets on what you are shooting at to disable it. And there's many factors that would go into affecting that range, such as you, your shotgun, your ammunition choices. But what's probably the biggest factor is what's called pattern entropy. Now, let's see if I can demonstrate that. The major factor affecting the maximum effective range of a shotgun is pattern entropy. And I'm going to demonstrate that with my Remington 870 tactical shotgun with an 18 and a half inch cylinder bore barrel that I have loaded with Remington 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch, one and one quarter ounce of number six lead bird shot. And I'm going to shoot this shoot and see target from 20 yards and let's see what kind of pattern we get. So when that shot column leaves the muzzle, it's basically as big around as the muzzle. But by the time it's gone 20 yards, it's spread out a lot. But what we see is that if this were a grouse, quail, pheasant in flight, or a rabbit running, our pattern is big enough that we have good hit probability, but dense enough that if we do hit what we're shooting at, we're almost certainly going to kill it. But what will this pattern look like at 40 yards? Let's put up a new shoot and see, shoot from 40 and see what kind of pattern we get. So we can see that our pattern is not nearly as dense as what it was at 20 yards. Now at 40 yards, if you were trying to shoot something really small like a quail, there might be some voids where you might actually miss. But shooting something like a jackrabbit, this is definitely dense enough to get it. Also, this pattern is at least five feet wide. You've got a lot of margin of error. But now I'll put up a new shoot and see and shoot from 60 yards. And let's see what our pattern looks like. So shooting from 60 yards, I count 18 impacts on our shoot and see, which doesn't look too bad, but we can see some voids in the pattern. So if I were trying to shoot a jackrabbit at that distance, he may very well have escaped the pattern. Or what could be even worse is only hitting him with a couple of pellets, so instead of getting a clean kill, he wanders off and dies somewhere else. That's not the result you want. But we don't want to hang our hats on the result of just this one shot. So I'll paste up these shot holes, shoot another round from 60, and see what kind of results we get. Now we have 12 pellets on our shoot and see target. This also illustrates something about the inconsistency of shot pellets. You can see a really good concentration in the center of the target. If that had been a rabbit, it would have killed him easily. But you see big voids right close to that. If I had been slightly off, wouldn't have hit him at all. So I'll paste up these shot holes and we'll shoot one more shot from 60. So now I count 19 impacts on the target, which looks pretty good, but you can still see some big voids in it. And that brings us to today's hypothesis. If these are the results that I'm getting from our Remington 870 Tactical with a cylinder bore barrel loaded with Remington 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch, one and one quarter ounce of number six lead bird shot, the hypothesis is that a double-barreled shotgun with the exact same cylinder bore barrel I measured, loaded with the exact same ammunition, will give us more impacts on the target at that range. Well, let's put up a new shoot and see target, and I'll shoot this from 60 yards, and we'll put that to the test.
Well, I only count 10 impacts, so that certainly isn't any more. So I'll paste up these shot holes, try that again. And now with our double barrel, we've gone from 10 to 21 impacts. That seems like a great improvement. What that really is is me remembering that I needed a different aiming point with the double than I did with the pump. But even at 21 impacts, that's still just barely more than we had with the pump. So I'll put up a new shoot and see, and we'll try this one more time. You may notice that our target looks a little different than it did before. We had an off-camera snafu and I had to reset it up. But now we see that we have 29 impacts on the paper. So, excluding the first shot where that was just me being off target, it would appear that our double is putting more pellets on paper than our pump is, even though they're both being fired from the same distance with the same ammunition and they both are cylinder bore barrels. How is the double able to do that? The answer to that is twofold, a setup and a punchline. Let me see if I can explain what I mean. So we've got our two shotguns, our Remington 870 and our Stevens 311, both shooting the same distance with the same ammunition, both with cylinder bore barrels. We're seeing that one is putting more pellets on target than the other. Why? Here's the setup. Some people will say that this has to do with barrel length. Actually, that has very little to do with it. I've shot a cylinder bore shotgun with a 14 inch barrel next to a cylinder bore shotgun with a 20 inch barrel and got very similar pattern sizes. What it really has to do with are the individual characteristics of individual guns. Just because both guns are rated as cylinder bore does not mean that both will have the same size pattern. I've found that this shotgun has a significantly denser, tighter pattern than this one does. Except that completely contradicts our results on paper. And here's the punchline. The hypothesis that a double-barreled shotgun can have greater maximum effective range than a single-barreled shotgun is based on the notion that sometimes, especially targets that are farther away, you're only going to get one shot. You're not going to have time to recover from recoil and take a second shot. So, using two fingers, you'll pull both triggers, simultaneously shooting both barrels, putting twice as much shot down range, Therefore, more pellets on target, increasing your maximum effective range. Now, is that safe? We'll discuss more on that in a few minutes. But is it effective? Well, our target seems to show that there is some merit to that. But even though we put twice as many pellets downrange, there certainly weren't twice as many impacts on target. So if it does increase your maximum effective range, and to what degree it increases it, is going to have a whole lot more to do with the individual characteristics of individual guns than it does two shots versus one. But it does bring up something else about double-barreled shotguns. Let me show you something. This is a Rossi 12-gauge coach gun. Now, as we're on the Stevens, both barrels were cylinder bore. On this shotgun, the right barrel is improved cylinder, and the left barrel is modified, sometimes called half choke. On a lot of your longer barreled hunting shotguns, the right barrel will be modified, and the left barrel will be full choke. Now, there's two concepts behind that. The first one is that most people will train to instinctively shoot the right barrel first. And if you get what you're shooting at, great. But if you don't, we presume that it's going to be moving away from you. Therefore, your second shot will be at a longer distance. You use your left barrel, which has greater choke. The other concept behind this is that a lot of your modern auto-loading or pump shotguns will have screw-in chokes or adjustable chokes, and so before you leave the house, you can adjust your choke based on what it is you think you'll be shooting and under what conditions you think you'll be shooting it. But the double barrel with two different barrels and two different chokes allows you to make that decision in the field at a moment's notice. So if I see something particularly far away, I can make the decision to shoot the left barrel, which has greater choke. So with this shotgun, to what extent, if any, will we increase our maximum effective range by shooting both barrels at once? Well, we've got our shoot and see target set up. I'll shoot it from 60 yards. I'll shoot three shots with the left barrel with its greater choke, see what kind of pellet count we're getting, and then we'll repeat that drill, shooting both barrels at once, and see to what degree, if any, we increase that pellet count on paper.
So I fired three shots and the number of impacts we had was 9, 15, and 10. And that tells us something about the individual characteristics of guns. That barrel is rated as being modified choke, but we're not getting as many impacts as we got with the 870 with its cylinder bore barrel. So now let's put up a new shoot and see target. I'll go back and shoot from 60 yards again, this time shooting both barrels at once, and see if we get any more impacts on paper. Now this is my first attempt to shoot both barrels simultaneously out of the Rossi coach gun, and we didn't get it on film as it happened. But as you can see, it did not increase our number of pellets on paper at all. So now I'll paste up these shot holes and we'll try this again. So here's our second attempt to fire both barrels simultaneously out of the Rossi coach gun. And again we see it does not increase our number of pellets on the paper at all. Why? Well if you were listening really closely you heard a very slight delay between the first and second shot. So after I fire that first shot, I'm still recoiling from it when the second shot goes off, so very few, if any, of those pellets hit the paper. Now off camera, I tried several more times, and I could not get both barrels to go off simultaneously in the Rossi coach gun. So using the Stevens double barrel, it was difficult. Using the Rossi, it was impossible, at least for me. And if you have that slight delay, it robs you of any effect you're getting out of shooting both barrels. Now, of course, the question comes up, is it safe to shoot both barrels simultaneously in a double-barreled shotgun? Well, here on this range, for the purpose of demonstration, under controlled conditions, I'm doing it, but I would not do it anywhere else unless the situation were exceptionally grave. Different people have different opinions. In my opinion, it puts excessive stress on your gun. It certainly put excessive stress on me, all to achieve results that are marginal at best. Now, just yesterday, someone contacted me expressing his indignation over my condescending remark of don't try this at home. I say that for several reasons. But today, in all sincerity, I'm saying, don't try this at home. I am what you call a professional. And thanks for watching.